After defeating Duke on Saturday, the Louisville Cardinals now control their own destiny to get to the ACC championship in Charlotte in early December. We'll talk about how they can get there and more on today's episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college using the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. As always, I want to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the Locked On Louisville Podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. With the win over number 20 Duke on Saturday, Louisville moves to 4-1 and one in conference play, now sitting in sole possession of second place in the conference, controlling their own destiny to get to the ACC championship. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about who you should root for this upcoming week in the ACC. And to conclude the show, we will dive into a Monday mailbag. So uh, with the win over Duke, Louisville moves to 4-1 and one in conference play. Currently in sole possession of the spot. They got some help over the weekend. Georgia Tech handing North Carolina their second loss in the conference, second straight loss in the season, now creating a clearer picture for Louisville to get to Charlotte in early December. Pretty clearly, Louisville controls their own destiny, and it makes this matchup with Virginia Tech upcoming this weekend that much more pivotal. Virginia Tech third in the conference currently only four and four on the season but three and one in conference play outside of the top three fsu louisville and virginia tech you have a slew of other teams with two losses north carolina duke miami boston college and nc state followed by clemson at two and four virginia one and three wake forest one and four and syracuse has yet to win a conference game so pretty clearly the ball is in Louisville's court. Winning out would essentially literally guarantee that you have a spot in the ACC championship in that first weekend in December in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, there are a couple of different scenarios. Granted, this is a completely different situation than we've seen in years past. Obviously, a new scheduling module. There is no, uh, There are no divisions any longer. So the ACC championship teams are determined by winning percentage and conference. Granted, there is a possibility that if Louisville does not win out, that there is you know a two-way tie, three-way tie, multiple team tie, you name it. So we're going to look at the scenarios. Obviously, for two teams tied, head-to-head competition between the two tied teams will be triumphant. If those two teams have not played each other, win percentage versus all common opponents would then be the next tiebreaker, which makes things kind of interesting because at the end of the day, it's really hard to determine the pathway to get to that championship game because a lot of teams play the same teams. Um, Outside of that, if that is the same, you have win percentage versus common opponents based on their order of finish. Combined win percentage of conference opponents, the tie team with the higher ranking by the team rating score metric provided by Sport Source Analytics. Um, <clears throat> and if it's not determined by that, the representative shall be chosen by a draw administered by the commissioner or designee. So, two teams essentially at this point in time, um, if for some reason, granted, we're having this conversation for the hypothetical that Louisville does not win out. If they do win out, then it really does not matter. Louisville will then go to the ACC championship game, presumably against Florida State, uh, 7-1 and one in conference play. Um, but speaking hypothetically, assuming that Louisville does not win out, that's where things get a little tricky. And if you're in a two-way tie at the second spot, you're hoping it is a team that you've already beaten, like a um, like a Duke, like a Boston College, like an NC State, or – You know, if you split with Virginia Tech and Miami, one of those two teams rising up until that point. Now, if it's a three-way tie, here's where things get a little bit interesting because a lot has to go your way. The first tiebreaker is combined head-to-head win percentage among the tied teams 
if all tied teams are common opponents. Granted, you look at who has two losses currently. If Boston College, NC State, and Duke, who ha- all have two losses, are up in that threshold, then you have to feel good about Louisville's chances. Now, if Miami or Virginia Tech is there and Louisville doesn't win against those two teams, well, that's where things get a little interesting. If all the tie teams are not common opponents, the tie team that defeated each of the other tied teams, it gets really, really murky when it comes to who wins these or who gets that spot. Um, it is essentially a disaster for the conference as a whole having to determine this. There really, in my opinion, should have been a better um, you know, deciding factor in all this if you're going to eliminate divisions. But at this point in time, you, you have to work with what you have to work with. It seems like the scheduling model is going to be changed again with the um, admission of California and SMU into the conference. So this seems to be like a one and done type thing. Maybe, maybe they go back to divisions within the ACC. I'm really not sure. Um, at the end of the day, I, I, I really, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, really only one year to have to deal with this at this point in time next year is, uh, to be determined, but it is what it is. But, the win over Duke was critical, and we talked about it all last week because of the implications that it could have on the ACC championship game. Number one, you put yourself ahead of Duke, and you keep yourself at that second line. Now, granted, this upcoming week is just as important because with the win, you get that much closer to the ACC championship, but Virginia Tech is the only other one-loss team in the conference. So if you were to lose to the Hokies, then you're in a very tough position at this point in time and you see what Virginia Tech has for the remainder of the season Boston College NC State and Virginia so there are no you know matchups any longer with Florida State or North Carolina um, at the top of the conference it's against a Virginia team that has struggled it's against an NC State team that's trying to find their footing offensively despite just beating Clemson and then against a Boston College team who it's really up in the air depending on what Boston College team you're going to get. So the best case scenario for Louisville this upcoming week is obviously winning the game, keeping that hold that you have on second place and making it to where you are legitimately in full soul possession. The only way you can get knocked off of that line is if you were to lose. So the main focus here is taking it a game at a time and getting victorious. You can't look too far ahead in the schedule because we've seen what happens when you do that. Um, you lose against Pittsburgh if you're Louisville. North Carolina loses to Virginia and Georgia Tech, and things get a little messy. And at this point, messy is not good for the Louisville Cardinals. You have to hope that it is a clean, smooth ride up until the end of the schedule. Granted, I, I will say, you know, this goes without saying that a loss to Kentucky in the season ending game does have no, um, you know, influence or ramifications on the conference championship because Kentucky's not in the conference, but final three conference games, two of them at home, the next two, and then they will go to hard rock stadium for the conference finale in November down in Miami. That is another game that you have to definitely watch Miami sitting there with two losses as well. So they are working. There's a lot of teams working here. If you're Louisville to where the best case scenario is you went out, in the conference, and you don't have to worry about it. But if you were to lose, that's where things get a little bit tricky because of all the qualifications, all of the tiebreakers that are in place. You would assume that schools that you have played and beat, you would have to hope that they end up winning the games like Duke, Boston College, NC State. That would bode well if they finish with two losses and you also ended up with two losses. Um, If you were to lose, I think the best way – The one you would probably choose to lose to, and this kind of sucks to say, is losing to Virginia and beating Virginia Tech and Miami because both of those two teams are right there in the standings of Virginia has three conference losses, so it really wouldn't matter um, in terms of where Virginia is at in the seeding if you win two of the final three. So beating Virginia Tech and beating Miami would probably be best-case scenario if a loss, if you knew that a loss was coming. Obviously, there's a ton of hypotheticals to play here. Um, at this point, it's really just for discussion, and we will continue to move forward as that uh, as the season goes along. But with that, it's time to talk about who you should root for 
in the ACC this upcoming week. We'll discuss that here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at Athletic Brewing. The game changer here for the Louisville Cardinals this past week was the dominant defense and Jawar Jordan in the rushing game. The game changer for non-alcoholic beers is Athletic Brewing Company. They have over 50 styles of craft, golden, sours, IPAs, my favorite, the Oktoberfest, especially this time of year. There's no hangover involved, and they're fit for all times, whether you're working out, watching a sports game, working on a work presentation, whatever may have you. A ton of versatility that you can go with with Athletic Brewing Company. So do yourself a favor. Go to Athletic Brewing Company or go to athleticbrewing.com and to go locked on to get 15% off your first online order. For, or find a store near you. Athletic Brewing Company is in Milford, Connecticut, and San Diego, California. But mainly, athleticbrewing.com, entering the code locked on to get 15% off your first online order. Also, I want to take this time to tell you about our friends over at eBay Motors. Drive, passion, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicles and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only eligible to U.S. customers. Hey, Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day. The college football season continues on, and Locked On continues to kick up our coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live at 11 a.m. Eastern time on every Locked On College YouTube channel. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, while also going in-depth like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every day. Find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You won't want to miss it, so be sure to stay tuned. Okay, heading into the second segment of this Monday episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast. Just talked about Louisville being in control of their own destiny as it relates to the ACC championship game in Charlotte in early December. The main thing here, the silver lining is, went out and you're in regardless. But if you were to lose one, that makes things a little bit interesting and you need a little bit of help. So it's never too early to root for certain teams in the conference. Let's look at the slate of games this upcoming week. Two games will not matter. That is Campbell at North Carolina. That's a non-conference game, obviously. Um, And Notre Dame at Clemson. Notre Dame not considered an ACC team. Now, granted, I mean, I guess you could cheer for Campbell because if North Carolina were to lose another game, that does, I guess, maybe bode well for how Louisville is sitting. But at this point in time, it is what it is. North Carolina should win that pretty easily. Notre Dame at Clemson, this really shouldn't have too much of an impact unless Louisville were to lose two of the next three games. But if they were to lose two of the next three, I probably doubt that they're even in contention at that point anyway. So two spots where it really doesn't matter at this point. So looking at the games where matter where it matters, there's one, two, three, four, five. Obviously, the six being the Louisville game to where you obviously want to cheer for Louisville to win. There's a Thursday night game, Wake Forest at Duke. Um, Louisville holds the tiebreaker over Duke. But in this matchup, you want Wake Forest to win it. Wake Forest one and four in conference play. That's going to essentially be – Um, A common denominator is you want the team with the lesser conference record to pull the win off. Um, With the Duke game, it's a little bit more interesting because you've already defeated Duke. So at this point in time, it's really hard to 
um, say one way or the other. But if you're looking at this game, Wake Forest is definitely the team that you want to win if you are a Louisville fan. There's a Friday game as well, Boston College and Syracuse. Boston College, like Duke, sitting at 2-2 two and two in conference. And like I just said, you want to cheer for the team with the lesser conference record. Syracuse has not won a game in conference play. They are 4-4, four and four, but have not won a game yet in the ACC. They're 0-4. Um, you want Syracuse to win this game, uh, putting both Duke and Boston College at three losses in the standings, giving yourself a little bit of breathing room. And then you get to the Saturday slate. There's three games to focus on, Georgia Tech at Virginia. Thankfully, Louisville handling business early in the season. Um, same thing, Virginia 1-3, and three. Georgia Tech is sitting at 3-2. and two. So, um, you know, they have already played one more conference game conference game than most of the teams out there so right now you're looking at a situation to where even if some of these teams do win you still hold the tiebreaker head to head but that begins to show what happens if it's a three-way tie well still you're at a little bit of an advantage if the three-way tie is against a team that you've beaten or even both teams that you've beaten because you get the nod there but at this point you're going to want to go um, against the team with the higher record. So Virginia hopefully winning that one. Florida State at Pittsburgh. This is one where it's kind of like, eh, it is what it is. If Louisville wins two out of the three, they won't have to worry about that Pittsburgh game because Pittsburgh is one and three in conference play. And then Florida State, even if Florida State loses, I mean, it, it makes things a little bit more challenging because you look at where Florida State is for the rest of the season. They only have two more conference games, Pittsburgh and Miami. And at that point, you're still cheering for Miami to beat Florida State. So honestly, if Florida State runs the table, it truly does not matter when it comes to where Louisville is at. Now, if, if the Seminoles were to lose this upcoming week and then lose to Miami, well, I guess then there is a conversation to be had, but I really don't necessarily think that that is going to be the case. But just for you know, lack of better terms, it's probably better to cheer for mayhem anyway. So cheer for Pittsburgh to get the win. Um, and it feels like if if you're not good enough, a loss will find you as according to ESPN College Game Day. So let's hope that is the case for Florida State coming up. The main one to focus on, and this is the one you really have to dive into here, is Miami at NC State. It's at NC State. Both teams are sitting at 2-2. Two and two. Louisville has already taken down the Wolfpack. They have to play Miami here upcoming in a couple of weeks. You can make cases for either of these two teams. Miami, for the remainder, has NC State. They have Florida State. They have Louisville, and they have Boston College. So it's not the easiest four-game slate. And then you look at what NC State has, and it is Miami, Wake Forest, at Virginia Tech, and then North Carolina. So both teams don't necessarily have a cakewalk to the end of the season. Um, at this point, I think you're better off cheering for NC State because you've already taken them down. So if it gets to a situation where if you potentially have a tiebreaker, you don't want – that means you would have to lose a game. And if you lose to Miami and Miami ends up running the table, where they're, they're going to get that spot. So at the end of the day, it's better – in my opinion, as a rule of thumb, to cheer for the teams that you've already beaten because you have that unspoken tiebreaker over those oppositions. So at this point in time, this week's not as interesting as this past week was, and it's not going to be as interesting as the week following this upcoming one, but I feel like there definitely should be a trend in the teams that you cheer for if you're a Louisville fan in terms of the ACC. It's the teams that are – um, you know, a little bit further down in the standings, especially I think that the main one to focus on is this final game. It's the Miami NC State game because this one could definitely have some big time ramifications in the final standings. Now, granted, I'll say it once, I'll say it a hundred times. It does not matter if one of Louisville or Virginia Tech runs the table, but if neither of them do, then you obviously have a very, very real scenario of having to assess tiebreakers and it really benefits Louisville to go into a tiebreaker with the team that they've already beaten than a potential nightmare scenario where, you know, you have to beat Miami to get into the ACC championship game. So that's just something to focus on. But obviously, we will see what unfolds with the week coming up. But to conclude the show, we'll dive into a Monday mailbag segment. We'll do that here momentarily. 
after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's the easiest and fastest way to play DFS. It's literally just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of players, including professionals and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. From quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types, that's what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Testing your skills is the most exciting way to play DFS. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Go to prizepicks.com slash college using the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, prizepicks.com slash college while using the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for a first deposit match up to $100. Terms and conditions apply. All right, heading into the final segment of this Monday episode of the show, diving into a weekly mailbag. couple of solid questions on the docket for today's show. First one applies to the uh, men's basketball scrimmage that will be happening um, upcoming tonight against Kentucky Wesleyan. The question is, what specifically are you looking for this team to accomplish and why? Well, I said it once, I'll say it again. I don't take much away from exhibition games. I think that, you know, the lack of competition or, you know, the pretty notably inferior competition sort of skews the results unless you were to lose and then you have a completely different conversation. But, you know, winning the game really means nothing to me other than handling business. And at this point, it's way too early to have any big time hot takes at this point. But, Specifically, what I'm looking for is just to be more careful with the basketball. 22 turnovers uh, last time out against Simmons College, which, let's be honest, is in no way close to the talent level of Louisville. A lot of these turnovers were very careless, unforced mistakes, and Simmons had 20 points off of those turnovers. So turnovers were a key um, issue last season, and we definitely don't want that to be an issue upcoming this year as well. So I think the first thing for me is – not turning the ball over as much and being more careful with the basketball. Next question, moving on along the Cardinals projected to finish last or second to last in conference play. Do you feel like this is a realistic spot? Yes or no. I mean, at this point in time, look, as I mentioned, the national perception of this program is legitimately not going to change until you start winning games. It doesn't matter what you know anybody says until the win losses start rolling in so being projected to finish second to last in conference play um i'll be honest i mean like exhibition games i don't necessarily put too much into conference rankings i mean last year louisville was what um middle of the pack or toward the bottom and they weren't um really even close to to getting anywhere near that point. So at this point in time, I mean, I think that they could overtake teams like Georgia Tech, Boston College, potentially Syracuse. Um, but at this point, I, I think you're probably looking at a middle of the pack finish. But second to last, I mean, that's assuming that 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 is literally suggesting that you're going to be close to being as bad as you were this past year. So, I mean, I don't think they'll be that low, but uh, there will be some improvement. Moving on along into football, Jack Plummer once again did not have the greatest game. How do you assess his performance against Duke? Um, I mean, I think that obviously you look at what he did, and it wasn't really anything special. But like I mentioned, Jeff Brown placed the strengths of his team. And the strength on Saturday was running the football. Plummer didn't have a great game, but he didn't have a bad game. He didn't turn the ball over once, 11 of 16 for 117, uh, completed around 70% of his passes. And if he does – you know, just that sort of as a game manager, then you're going to assume that Louisville's going to win the majority of their games. Um, he took care of the football. He made some throws when needed. Um, I thought he ran some solid scrambles at times as well. So I'm not necessarily going to criticize this performance, especially since, um, you know, the weather is a little bit of a factor there. And Louisville made it a point of emphasis to run the football. And they did just that, you know, rushing for more yards on Duke than any other team this season. So, no, nah, there's not really going to be much criticism there. It doesn't have to be a great game to win games, especially when you look at the context of things. So last question that 
is in the mailbag is how good is Virginia Tech? I mean, that is the million dollar question. It's really hard to sort of assess it because there's really not a ton of common opposition that Louisville plays with the Hokies. Um, you look at the four and four start to the year for Virginia Tech. I mean, they beat Old Dominion, which is what it is. Then they lost three straight against Purdue, Rutgers, and Marshall. And it looked like they were going to be one of the worst teams in the ACC. Again, they beat Pittsburgh, who just beat Louisville, but that is what it is. They got blown out against Florida State, and then they blew out Wake. They blew out Syracuse, both of those two teams that the Cardinals do not play. So, I mean, it's really hard to tell at this point in time because of the lack of common opposition. Um, you look at how the two teams stack up against each other. Um, really not necessarily too awful close, but they're at least in a respectable ballpark when it comes to total offense. Total defense is pretty online. They give up um, almost double as many rushing yards per game, uh, but they are better against the pass. Now, granted, their strength of schedule is when they do play good teams, they really haven't played them well. So really, it's just a matter of handling business, taking the opposition seriously, executing your game plan. It doesn't matter how good or not good Virginia Tech is doing what you need to do because I feel I really do feel like the only team that will beat Louisville on Saturday will be Louisville. So that's going to wrap up the mailbag segment and the episode as a whole. To find this episode and all episodes of the show, be sure to stay tuned to this graphic. The podcast is free and available wherever you get your show.